So I'm going to answer a few questions here. What happens if you have a drive that's too tall that you can't get the cover on? And what happens if you have a drive that doesn't meet the minimum specs in the PlayStation? Hey, welcome back to GT Canada. If you've seen my other video, you saw that I've already installed a aftermarket SSD drive into the internal storage slot on my PlayStation 5. The tests went beautifully and it's working great. But you also know that the drive that I installed in here is actually the top tier drive. So I installed this. It's a Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. Now I only put the one terabyte in and I explained the reasons why in my other video. So you can check the link in the description if you wanna see that video and how that went. But you know that this drive is rated at 7,000 megabytes per second. You know that Sony requires 5,500 megabytes per second for their drive, or at least they say it's recommended. And when I installed this drive and did the format on it, it does a low level read write test on the drive to make sure it meets those minimum specs this drive which is rated at 7000 megabytes per second came in at 6600 megabytes per second what happens when you put in a drive that just barely meets the spec this is a sabrent rocket it is not the plus version of the drive you may have one of these drives perhaps due to shortages, this is all you can get. And we're curious to know what happens if the drive does not meet the 5,500 megabyte per second spec. Now this should be close, so it's gonna be interesting. I don't know, I haven't even taken this out of the wrapper yet to find out. So we're gonna open this up and install it in here and see how it does. But what happens if you have a drive that doesn't meet the specs at all? So this is a Corsair MP600, a Gen 4 PCIe SSD. So that means that it meets the requirements that Sony set out as being a Gen 4. Now this one is a one terabyte and I got it for about 140 Canadian dollars. For the same storage capacity, I saved over $100 by getting this one over this one. But the specs on this on Amazon say that this one only does about 4,000 megabytes per second, which is interesting because on the box, it says up to 4,700 megabytes per second. So according to the specs, if by some miracle, this one will match the specs that the box says, and this one will possibly be a little lower than the specs on the box, they should be very comparable. What if I stick this one in here? What will it do? Will it let me install games on the drive? What will it do? I don't know. Again, I haven't installed it. The other thing I want to show you, I've got to actually open the drive before I can show it. So I'm going to throw that on the floor. I'm going to open this guy up. I do like the case that these come in. It's actually pretty nice. The other thing you'll notice that this drive has, this is the drive, it is missing the heatsink. And you'll know that Sony said that you must have an external heatsink. I'm going to stick this on without a heatsink and see if Sony realizes that I don't have it. I don't think they have any way of knowing if there's a heatsink. Now, it's important to note, I will be running this drive without a heatsink, but I'm not going to be running it for long. I'm doing it for testing purposes only. If I were to leave this in my PlayStation, I would recommend that you buy a heatsink, which I have a link in the description for, which you can install on this. And I did install it on the drive that is in here. So when I pull this out, you will see the heatsink that I put on. They're very cheap, so you might as well get one. This one does not have the heatsink. This one does have a heatsink on it. And I can tell you right now by looking at it, that looks very tall. I have a feeling that I'm not gonna be able to put the metal cover on top of this like Sony also says I need to do. So I'm gonna be finding out a few things with this one. But it does at least have the heat sink and at one terabyte for just over $100, it's really inexpensive. There we go. We just exposed this, which is the expansion slot. I'm gonna pull the cover off and that exposes my drive. If you want to know uh, where to get this, I've got links in the description. The purple one just barely fit and this one is significantly taller. We're going to, we're going to install the Sabrent drive first without a heatsink. So there you can see the Sabrent drive is installed without a heatsink. We'll stick this back on just for fun. Now this PlayStation has the cheaper Sabrent SSD in here. 
which I'll have a link in the description. If this works out, you can buy one if you want it, or you can buy the higher tier one. It saves about 40 bucks. So I'm going to stick this in and see what happens. So we've installed the Sabrent drive. Now we're going to power up the PlayStation for the first time and see what it does on the initialization. So remember, this is a drive that just barely meets the specifications for the PlayStation system. So we just want to see what it does when it boots up and what our read speed comes back as when it does the low level read test. You need to format your, your drive before you put it in. So again, if you have a drive one in the FAQ, it says, if you're installing an SSD, you must be prepared to lose all data on that SSD. So if you're using a drive that you're sharing on a different system, on a computer or something else, when you do this format, it will wipe out everything on that SSD. So be warned, you're gonna lose all your data. So we're gonna hit format. And there we go. So the format is done. It also does a speed test. So this is 5,600 megabytes per second. So now we just hit okay. Okay again, and it'll just rebuild the database quick and boot into the software. Again, to have this work, you must be on system software version 2.0 or higher. So if you're watching this video, make sure that your system is on 2.0 before you do this, or it will give you an error. You must update first and then install the drive. Settings, we're gonna go to storage. So here we can see my console storage and the SSD storage which it reports as a Sabrent Rocket 500 gigabyte, and it says I have 500 gigabytes free. So if you're wondering if you can use the lower spec PCIe 4.0 M.2 drives that meet the 5,500 megabyte per second read speed, even though it might technically just drop below that, yes, it does seem to work. But we already knew that. I've got no cooler on here, and I've got a drive that just barely meets the spec. Let's swap out for the other drive and then try the rest of these tests. Okay, so now that the test on that drive is done, I need to put the larger Corsair drive in, and we're gonna see what happens with that one. I don't know if it'll even work or if it'll pass the speed test or anything, but we might as well stick it in and see what happens. So, out with the Sabrent drive, in with the Corsair. Now, the first thing that I notice is what I was saying, this is definitely much bigger. I don't know if you can see there, but it definitely sticks out. I do not think that I'm gonna be able to put this cover on. I'll try anyway. No. So the cover does not fit on with this drive. It is too tall. So I'm gonna answer a few questions here. What happens if you have a drive that's too tall that you can't get the cover on? And what happens if you have a drive that doesn't meet the minimum specs in the PlayStation? Well, let me put a PS5 game on it. I don't know, we're gonna find out. So now that the Corsair drive is in, it's time to power up the PlayStation and see what happens. So we've installed it, it's, and I'm just gonna boot it up. This is the first time I've seen it boot, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's looking good so far. This, remember, this is a slower drive. I'm not supposed to be able to use this drive in the PlayStation. This is saying to use your, I'm not, so this is everything that I'm used to seeing with any old drive. So uh, nothing looks different so far. So I'm gonna say format. It's doing a low level format and performing a speed test. Wow. So according to the low level speed test, this drive has met the criteria that it needs to run in this PlayStation. Even though the box says 4,900 megabytes per second. This just did a speed test and says that it's 5,600 megabytes per second. So that's really good. The drive has a heat sink on it and it's passed the PlayStation test. So let's see if we boot into the system now. So it says, okay, it's been formatted and we're good to go. So I am in the beta. So you have to have software version 2.0 or higher. If you're not in the beta, then you just need the official version software. If that's not out yet, then you just gotta wait for it. So here we are. When I go to my settings, I can go to storage and I see console storage. I see M.2 storage. Now it says my M.2 free space has one terabyte of storage. So it's giving me the full one terabyte. So that's actually really amazing that that slower drive is gonna work in here. What I don't know are the long-term effects of running the game with the heat shield off. I'm gonna go back into the studio and we'll wrap this all up, but this is interesting development. So I'm actually genuinely shocked that the Corsair SSD actually worked because the specs do not meet the criteria for the PlayStation 5. It says 
up to 4,700 megabytes per second. Now the PlayStation believes that it's actually transferring at just over 5,500 megabytes per second. But what I can say is that I will put a link in the description for this drive. You can go ahead and buy it. If it doesn't work, I guess you can return it. But if you do buy this drive and you put it in and it does not work or it does, put a comment in the description. Let me know if you've used this drive or a drive like it and if it worked because this actually opens up a whole new world for you. This drive right here, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, costed $260, plus it did not have a heatsink on it. I bought the heatsink for another $20. So that's about $280 Canadian for one terabyte of storage. Whereas this drive with a heatsink was only $140. So it's really half of the price of this. So that is great. You could actually, for the price of one of these, you could actually put a two terabyte drive in instead. Now, I do want to talk about one thing, and to do that, I need to open this PlayStation back up. So with the cover off, and you can see that this drive, again, is very tall with the heatsink that comes with this. So this drive does not meet a lot of the specs. So this is quite a bit slower than the rated specs go. It's quite a bit taller. And as I've already kind of shown, this cover does not fit. Like it, it's just not going to fit on here. It hits that, like see how far that sticks up. That cover is not going to fit on here. Like it's just not going to fit. So I've got this exposed. So because this is exposed, it raises the question, is it okay to leave the drive exposed? And I don't know what the real answer is. I know that Sony has that height restriction so that the cover fits back on. But I wanna show you something here. I'm gonna pull this drive back out. With the drive out, I gotta take the screw out too so I don't lose it and put it in there. Inside this space here, this is a sealed coffin. There is no spaces in here for airflow. I'm gonna try and show you all that. There's no airflow in there. If there's no airflow in here, and this is a totally sealed space, there's no way that I can see for air to get around there. So I don't think having that cover off is, is bad. Because by doing this, I actually gain the advantage of the airflow for the fan. Whether this is exhausting or intaking, it doesn't matter. What I know is air is going across, across here which means that the air that this cooler is, it's just sitting there, it's passive, right? So it's just emanating heat. So if heat's coming off of that and the fan's blowing air over it, whether it's sucking it or blowing it, it means the air's moving over it. So it'll actually help to cool that drive, I think. So with all that in mind, I now have three drives and I have a decision to make. Which drive do I leave in the PlayStation? the one that totally meets the specs of the PlayStation, which just cost me $300 for one terabyte, the one that only costed me $220, but if I transfer this heat sink off of here onto here, the $20 of the heat sink will transfer to this. So this one was now 240, so I really only saved still 40 bucks. Is the 40 bucks really worth it? Not really, I'd rather stick with the fast one. So this one is not gonna be used. However, the price difference between the Corsair, which the PlayStation is happy to accept in the system, and the Sabrent Rocket Plus is so big that I honestly, I'm gonna put this one in. I'm gonna do a long-term test. I'm gonna stick this drive in, I'm gonna leave it in, I'm gonna put all my games on it and see what happens. See if I experience crashing issues or anything like that. Keep in mind, Sony has said that if you experience any gameplay related issues by running the game off of the external drive, that you must transfer it to the internal storage built into the PlayStation 5 as the very first step in troubleshooting. So I will know quickly, I'm gonna transfer my entire PlayStation library onto this stick and I'm gonna see what happens. I will be making another video to explain my long-term results running this drive. If you wanna join me with this test, I'll put a link in the description to all of these drives. You can pick the one that suits you best, but keep in mind, these ones are selling out fast. 
very fast because they're on a lot of lists as drives that work perfectly with the PlayStation 5. These ones are not on those lists because currently nobody realizes that they're gonna work. Once they've seen this video, they will disappear probably fast too. But until then, if you're the first one watching it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, buy the drive so that you can get your PlayStation updated a lot sooner. This video has gone on long enough. We've answered a lot of questions, which is wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this content. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos over here while you wait for the next video to drop. I hope to see you again, but until next time, have a great day.